Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at actual CPA questions that were released from the AI CPA. The reason I say actual is because the AI CPA is the organization that administered the exam. Therefore, those questions were actual questions appeared on the exam. They may appear in one way or another, but the point is if you know how to approach these questions, you'll be ready to approach the actual questions on the exam day and the format will be the same format as the actual exam. Specifically, we're going to be covering BEC questions. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house all my lectures, 1,600 plus accounting, audit and tax and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including thousands of CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. On my website, I have ac you will have access to additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, true, false, multiple choice. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions, I strongly su suggest you check out my website if you are seriously studying for your CPA exam. Let's take a look at the first question. An analyst expect the company to pay a dividend of $5 with a dividend growth rate of 3%. The inflation rate is expected to fall from 5% per year to 3% per year. Okay? As a result of the change in this inflation premium, which is premium going down, the companies will, what happen what to the company? So notice here, they're either talking about the stock. So two answers has the stock price. Two answer has the cost of equity. Now, let me tell you something. You cannot really predict anything about the stock price. So as a result of changes in inflation, you don't know what's going to happen to the stock price. The stock price could increase. The stock price could remain stable. I would say I would immediately eliminate the two answers about the stock price. Again, because you cannot really make any projection about the stock price, whether it's going to go down and remain stable because inflation could affect the each company differently. For some companies, inflation go down could benefit the company. Sometimes inflation goes up could benefit the company. So we cannot say anything about inflation. So the now we're down to 50-50. So it must be something to do with cost of cost of equity. Cost of equity. Would the cost of equity likely to remain stable or would the cost of equity likely to decrease? That's the question here. Now, I want you to think about it. When we looked at the interest rate, remember, the inter as, as, as inflation goes up, we have to pay more. The cost of money goes up because inflation, the cost of everything goes up and the money is a commodity. So the cost of the money goes up as inflation goes up. What is happening here? What is happening here? Well, what's happening here? Inflation is going down. As the cost of the money goes down, as interest rate goes down, therefore the cost of equity, the cost of the stock will also go down because the the premium, the premium, let me see if I can, let me see if I can uh, kind of show you this in a, uh, in a, uh, on a graph or in some type of format so you will see this. So let's assume we have inflation of 5%. This is the inflation. Well, guess what? Now the interest rate, the interest rate, when the cost of debt has to be more, you have to pay, let's say, 8%. Why? Because when you borrow money, you have to pay the lenders. This is the debt, cost of debt. Oh, debt. The cost of debt is 8%. What does that mean? It means you are paying 3% premium over inflation to borrow money. Now, we know, we know for a fact that the cost of equity now, for equity, you have to pay an additional premium. So if you want to buy equity, you, you want to raise money from equity, you might have to pay, let's say, 15%. This is the cost of equity. And this is 7% above the cost of that. Now, here's what's going to happen. If this line, if the inflation goes down, as they're saying here, it goes from 5 to 3%, what's going to happen? The cost of debt should go down by approximately 2%, which the cost of debt, it means the cost of borrowing money goes down to 6%. Therefore, the cost of equity should also go down by approximately 
two percent now i'm not saying it should happen percent for a percent dollar for a dollar or the point is if inflation goes down the cost of that should goes down as a result the cost of equity goes down because the cost of money should go down in general so the cost of equity would likely decrease that's all we can say and notice how the answer is written will likely not for sure will likely based on the information but we cannot say anything about the stock price and cost of equity will likely re remain stable not necessary if the cost of money goes down the cost of equity is part of the cost of the money so for the cost of equity will go down okay let's take a look at this question in which of the following situation would there be an inelastic demand okay now before you read the answers you need to know what is inelastic demand inelastic demand means if there's any change in the price specifically an increase in the price the demand does not change proportionally to that increase and for example if think about it if the price goes up by 10 percent and demand falls by 10 percent well guess what it's not an it's elastic it's not inelastic why because as the price goes up the quantity demand went down by the same price this is what we expect to see inelastic is when the price goes up by 10 percent and demand only dropped by six or seven or five percent so so the price went up by 10 but the demand did not drop by the same amount so think of this i'm going to give you an example just to kind of make it close to you for example the iphone if apple increases their iphone by 10 percent maybe the demand will go down but not necessarily by 10 percent maybe it will go down by five why because there is an inelastic demand the price of the phone kind of it's not really influenced by the price that much okay so let's take a look at the answers a a five percent increase a five percent price increase result in a three percent decrease in the quantity demanded this looks like an inelastic demand why because the price went up by five demand went down only by three okay but don't select this answer make sure you go all over the answers a five percent increase result in a six percent decrease hold on a second this is elastic why because as the price went up the, the demand went down so this this uh, product is price sensitive it's it's the opposite of inelastic a five percent increase resulted in a four percent decrease again it's elastic as the price went up the quantity demanded went down by the same amount a three percent decrease result in a five percent increase that's good this is how we expect things to happen if the price goes down we expect most likely this is the law of supply and demand the quantity demanded to go up so the the answer as we said a the price went up the demand did not go down as much so this is inelastic demand this is an inelastic demand situation let's take a look at this question a company is considering a move to a software as a service SAAS offering instead of a traditional in-house application which of the following concerns is unique to software as a service now for one thing if you don't know what a software as a service is um, then you'll be able to you know you won't be able to answer the question but think of that in contrast to traditional in-house application traditional in-house application it means the software is housed and the application is housed at your place of business software as a service think of the cloud actually a software as a service is a form of a cloud it's when a third party hosts your application think of google document when you use google document uh, what happened is google hosts your document it's as, as software as a service okay this is what we're looking at here rather than having like a, a word even now microsoft does it but think about the old word document where you have it only housed at your computer which is in-house application so which of the following concern is unique is unique to saas unique to that okay disaster recovery capability and documented recovery procedure i don't believe that's unique to sass uh, whether you have an in-house or traditional you're going to have to deal with this um, user credential setup and control over the action that employee can perform i don't think that's unique to this because whether you have an in-house or a cloud you still have to have the credential setup and control over what employees can perform allocation of software expense and overhead charge to departments again that's going to be with both so in the process of elimination i would see ownership of process data and cost migration what happens is once you migrate 
to a cloud service system, software system. The ownership of the process data, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a problem that's unique to SASS because it's in-house, in you have no problem. You own the stuff and the cost of data migration, think just this should give you the answer, the cost of m data migration. Well, this is unique. So when you're, if you're considering moving, the cost of data migration is a factor that's unique to that situation. So I would say if I'm, if I don't know anything about software as a service, just knowing that we are moving to the software, the cost of data migration will be a unique, a unique challenge to this move. So I would say D as a David is the answer. Number four, each of the following is a method to evaluate internal control based on the framework set by Committee of Sponsoring Organization, COSO, except so we have three correct answers here. So be careful with, about those three correct answers because we're looking for the incorrect answer. So there's only one incorrect answer. So don't read the first statement. Say, well, that sounds good. That sounds correct. Well, you're not looking for the correct. You're looking for the incorrect. So each of the following is a method to evaluate internal control, except, okay? Let's start from the bottom. Testing to determine whether the control are operating effectively and have prevented loss in the past. Do we do this? Do we, do we, is this a method for uh, evaluating internal control? Sure we do. Part of monitoring, we test to determine whether the control are operating effectively. So this is one of the correct answers, which is except is doesn't apply here, okay? Identifying, mitigating control to prevent losses. Well, this is based on risk assessment. When we do risk assessment based on COSO, we identify and mitigate control to prevent losses. That's also a method to evaluate internal control. Evaluating internal control system that focus first on the risk identification of specific losses. Yes, yes, ident identifying risk, uh, mitigating risk is part of the control activities. So, you know, mitigating risk is control activities, evaluating in internal control that focus first on risk identification is part of risk assessment. I would say by the process of elimination, A is the answer, but let's take a look at A. Distinguishing economy risk from industry risk and enterprise risk, that has nothing to do with the evaluating inter internal control based on the COSO, the Committee of Sponsoring Organization. Um, economy risk and in from industry risk, that's something that's macro, on the macroeconomic level, it has nothing to do with COSO. So the answer is A. So again, in this situation, and just by just come, I would say, I would, I would use my common sense, understanding the control activities, understanding risk assessment, and understanding mon monitoring the five component of internal control, hopefully would help you answer a question like this. Because part of the internal control, it doesn't help us distinguish economy risk from industry risk and enterprise risk, okay? So make sure you understand internal control. That's all what I'm trying to say. And COSO, COSO is important for the BEC exam. And as, as of today, I don't have any, I have a lot about internal control in my audit class, but I don't have a COSO lecture or by on it then on its own. Maybe I should do that in the near future. So let's take a look at this question. So I'm going to go ahead and snip it. So this way we can work with this information. The capital structure of merit company is 0.2 or 20% common equity and the debt capital structure is 80% debt. So simply put, we have a company that rely 20% on equity, 80% on debt. This is equity and this is debt. The common stock, the common cost of common equity is 10% times 10% and the pre-tax cost of debt is 0.5 times the cost of debt. Now, we, ha we have to remember the debt is tax deductible. The tax rate is 21%. It means we have to find out the after uh, tax cost of that. To find the after tax cost of that, we're going to take 5% times 1 minus 0.21, the tax rate. So let's do that. So we have uh, 1 minus, let me, 1 minus 0.21 is 0 0.79 times 0.05. 0 0.0395, 0 0.0395, 0 0.0395. So this is the cost of debt net of tax, which is good. It means although we pay 5%, but, the, but we have a tax deduction 
uh, because the interest cost is uh, the interest cost is tax deductible. Therefore, our net cost of that is point three point nine five percent. I'm going to make it three point nine five percent. Three point nine five to keep the uh, so it's three. Let me, let me do this times three point nine five percent. So this is the cost of that after tax. We don't have to do the same thing for equity because equity is not tax deductible. Now we are ready to multiply uh, 20 percent times 10 percent is 0 0.02 plus now we need to multiply 0 0.8 times 0 0.0395 that's 0 0.316 0 0.0316 0 0.02 plus 0 0.0316 is 0.0516 which is 5.16 therefore the cost the weighted average cost of capital is 5.16 now here's what I need to tell you if you took 0.8 times 0 0.5 0 0.05 or 5 percent will give you 0 0.04 0 0.04 plus 0 0.02 will give you six percent and this will be the answer but this will be incorrect so the answer is there for a reason to confuse you that six percent you have to remember the cost of that will have to be factored after tax after tax means you have to take your cost of that times one minus the tax rate whatever that tax rate is most likely it will be 0.21 because now the tax rate is flat in the US therefore and it's going to be lower so the debt is good now these questions are important are important for your understanding but what I suggest you do if you really want to study for the exam you're going to invest in your lifetime once for this exam to pass go to my website subscribe I have many 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 more resources to help you pass the exam the subscription is pretty minimal it's not that much and it's going to give you access to thousands of questions hundreds of lectures multiple choice true false and I'm here all I'm always here to help you good luck and study hard